Um, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you that we can open your word and we can learn, Father, from Scripture, the truth that we base our life and our walk upon, and the assurance of our salvation. Let this be a wonderful day, and let the Spirit fill us, Father, to have us know what you would have us to know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's gather money. Boo, we're going to sell you off and probably get four or five pesos. <laughs> pesos are a unit of money that's worth a lot less than a penny. <laughs> She says, give $50 from my uncle. Is that what she says? <laughs> <laughs> uncle says, I don't think so. I don't. <laughs> 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 Susie, are you going for the Elvira look? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's cute. I know, my, no, my mom was like, I'd come home from school and she'd have Elvira on, like four or five days of the week. <laughs> so, she was like totally into Elvira. You made me really good. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hold it, hold it through October. <laughs> All right. Well, let me get some more coffee while we're finishing. Yeah. She's considered one of the sexiest women in scary stuff. Okay. <laughs> 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 scary. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Um, I was hoping that Linda would be here because we had a discussion about this a little over sushi. Got it. So we had a discussion of, uh, about this over sushi. I'm just checking that I'm recording. Um, and we had a really nice conversation and I have to say something we had really good sushi yes, we did. oh my goodness this place looks like a hole in the wall and it's called Joe's <laughs> you're thinking sushi at come to Joe's it was really good I have not had sushi that good in a very very long time and so I thank you for that um, anyway so we started a discussion where we're doing demons and we're going to be getting back to aliens but we're going to diverge a little here on on the nephilim who here has heard of the nephilim what are your thoughts on the nephilim what have you heard huh they were giants anything else to be a return something coming out of us <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You're right. right? I would say, sir, excellent. Right? Any place that has a black mass in front of a Hindu god and says we have nothing to do with any religion but science. All right. Right. And their symbol is three sixes. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Nephilim. Okay, you guys just heard they're giants. Anything else about them? There's a lot of opinions. So before we start this study, we're not dogmatic about this. Okay, we can't be dogmatic. We can take, though, the preponderance of Scripture that seems to support the most plausible cause. Okay, now that's what we're going to try and do today. And there are great theologians throughout history who have different views on this. Okay, wonderful men and women of God who have different views about this theory. But we'll look at four of them. Okay, technically usually you'll hear of three. I added another one on there, which has become more common today. First one is fallen angels mated with human women. Anybody ever heard that? Okay, so fallen angels came and, and mated with human women. Second one is human men possessed by demons enticed these women and mated with them. Okay, uh-huh. Uh I... <laughs> I can't... <laughs> 
<laughs> Three, the godly sons of Seth versus the ungodly sons of, of Cain. Well, I, I shouldn't put verses, but that's kind of what it is. They were enticed. The women were the ones who were of the Jezebel spirit. And they were enticing the godly sons of Seth. And their offspring became these men of renown. Okay? And the last and more kind of a, a newer one is they were ungodly rulers and kings of the day. So they don't put any more specifics in that they were the rulers of the day. And from their line, they were ungodly rulers with a lot of might and power. And from them is where we get the term Nephilim. So n the term comes from the word Nephal. So you ever heard of cherub? Or seraph. If I add the eem at the end, it becomes plural. Cherubim, seraphim, nephalim. Okay? N A P H A L is nephal. You add it, they make it N A P H I L I U M. Nephalim. So a plural of these fallen ones. It also can, and it's in the Subtuagit, translated as gigantus, or the giant ones. Okay, so you probably heard the, the sons of Anak being those who are the giants, which we will look at a little bit today. Okay, any questions so far? Just laying the groundwork here. These are your most common scriptures when you're studying the Nephilim. If anybody wants to write these down, we're going to go through them one by one. But these are the most common scriptures used to view and study what the Nephilim are. Let's start at the beginning. Genesis 6. Who'd like to, to read Genesis 6? Oh, sorry. Before I do that, sons of God means B'nai Elohim. Okay? B'nai Elohim. Sons of God. And by the way, in the Old Testament, whenever the term sons of God is, is used, it is always referring to angels. In the New Testament, we have sons of the living God, which we are. But in the Old Testament, always means angels. Okay? Genesis 6. Let's go start with 1 through 4. Who'd like to read that? Now it came about, when men began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Wow. It's kind of just a blurb in there, isn't it? Like, what? You're like, okay, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Right? It kind of catches you off guard at first. Who's read this before? Okay. All right, right? So it goes on. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Continually. Now, many would say it's the influence of the fallen ones already in a world that started to turn away from God. And they pushed it. But either way, as their hearts were going cold, it wasn't very difficult for them to influence them. Let's think for a moment. In the garden, what was the temptation given to Eve? Oh, okay, well, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, sweetie. The evil snake. Okay, right, the tempter was the evil snake. Do you remember what he said to her? You can be like God. Yes, you can be like God. Good job. See what a comb hair will do for you? Get your, main, your brain stirring? Uh, <laughs> so, you can be like God. God. Okay, you can be like God. Do we have that today? We get, absolutely. Absolutely. Give some examples. Mormon. The Mormons. The Mormons took this and ran with it. They took Satan saying you can be like God. They're taking the sons of God, right? Being able to infiltrate and breed with to make a greater race. The Mormons and others just love this stuff. See? See, we're all gods. Now let me let me take that further. 
What is a common saying today? In the New Age movement, there's something called Christ consciousness. Right? You can be your own God. You can have the consciousness of Christ. You can elevate yourself to a supreme level. Is that any different? Not really, except that we're talking about the root of the biology behind it versus being able to do it purely spiritually. But the idea is the same. The intent of the heart is the same. Self-godhood. Right? So, there's some interesting ways we can expound on this. And as we go a little further, we will. But as someone said about... well. It was the idea of transhumanism kind of popped up a minute ago, and we were talking about <laughs> the breeding and making themselves a certain way, and what's going on today. Transhumanism is happening all over the place. It's possible the two could be one possible or plausible way to look at how it's coming back, the return of the Nephilim. Who said that? You said that, right? One view is it was transhumanistic before, and we're coming back to it being transhumanistic again. So, the return of the Nephilim. Okay? You can be like God. Let me affect your DNA. So, not necessarily big giants, but the mindset. Don't know. Don't know. Well, this would be biological. We're talking biological, not just spiritual now. Okay, so right, because this is, there were the, these people existed, and they continued to exist, so it was not only a spiritual thing, it was a biological thing. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go, oh, I didn't change this, sorry. Job 1.6. Let's open our Bibles to Job 1.6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord, said, Going to and fro on the earth. What I want you to see here is the Ben Elohim. Actually, I didn't. Good thing I didn't change it. That's what I meant to do. The Ben Elohim. This is, I'm showing you sons of God. Here again in Job 2 1, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. They're doing this in heaven. Is this man? No, it's in heaven. I want you to understand this. The sons of God in the Old Testament was not a reference to humans. The sons of God in the Old Testament was always a reference to angels. The sons of God went before God. A multiplicity of angels went before the Lord. Okay? Um, Job 38. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? You guys have heard this one. Tell me if you have understanding. Right? It says, Who determined its measurements? Surely you know, or and who stretched out the line upon it? On what its base is sunk, and who laid its cornerstone? That's God talking to Job. And he ends it by saying, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. The sons of God were the angels in heaven. Lucifer is also called the morning star. Right? We have references to angels as stars in the heavens. Right? Sons of God, Bene Elohim. Bene Elohim. Bene Elohim. Okay? Over and over again. Angels. So, in the reference of Genesis 6... Just, this is just support. Again, we're not absolutely dogmatic, but Genesis 6 is in the Old or the New Testament? Uh, the Old. Sons of God in Genesis 6 is B'nai Elohim. The other references all refer to them before God in heaven. Okay, is you see we're building a, a case here that when it talks about B'nai Elohim in the Old Testament, it's referring to angels that have fallen. Now, I want you to think of something, because I'm not going to really go back to those other views very much. I'll touch on them. But if, if, if it's just a man who's possessed, I went over this last week, possession doesn't necessarily change his DNA or his chromosomes or anything else. So if he impregnates a woman, 
the angelic DNA, just because he's possessed spiritually, doesn't change, as far as we know, his DNA. Do you get what I'm saying? How would his sperm suddenly be angelic just because he's possessed? We have people possessed today. Throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, people were possessed. It didn't seem to change their DNA. They just have a, had allowed spiritual possession to happen to them. And if it was Seth and the daughters of Cain, it's very interesting that this continuation appears to be referred to as these renowned mighty giants because it's we again we get we get them saying they're giants in the land we're grasshoppers like them which we will discuss it doesn't seem likely that it's just an ungodly line and a godly line merging do we have other examples of godly lines and ungodly lines merging throughout the bible absolutely but they don't have this <laughs> this race or this group that become these mighty, mighty men of renown that are discussed in the Bible, even though it's small, it's referred to from, the, from Genesis all the way through the end of the Bible. So let's continue. Remember, in the beginning it was what? All good. Okay. So, Satan fell sometime after it was all good. So God rested on day seven. He pronounced it all good. Sometime after that, the B'nai Elohim, starting with Lucifer, fell. Okay? And again, last week we talked about, we don't know what that time frame was, but it probably wasn't that long of a period of time. The next date we have is 130 years with Seth. So we have that window right there. And that is it. And do you remember, have you not read that he created them from the beginning, male and female? I put this in here because I'm making a point, but I was hoping Linda would be here <laughs> because... <coughs> Because this came up, I had my pastor's breakfast the other day, and when Linda and I were talking, um, Craig Hawkins said, well, Gre uh, uh, Barnhouse has the belief that the Nephilim could have come from a pre-Adamic race. And we both said, but he was a gap theorist. So anyone who believes in... A, an old earth that was destroyed believes that there was sin before Adam and Eve, which dispels the rest of that argument. So I had this for her, but it's good for us to reference in the beginning. This is talking about approximately six to 10,000 years ago, according to the biblical chronology. That's when this happened. Okay? We're not talking about that long ago, really, compared to what the world says now, billions and billions of years. No. Right? If that was true, there would be trillions and trillions and trillions of dead bodies that we couldn't even walk. We'd be stepping on bones. Right? There really would. Population-wise, we are exactly where we should be at approximately 6,000 years. Okay? So, as we continue... Let's go to 1 Peter. Remember, we've been studying 1 Peter. This is all support. Now, obviously, I'm leaning towards that they were some kind of B'nai Elohim. Kids! Kids! Where are you going? Are you going to go in that room and play? Okay. Alright. So, 1 Peter. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous from the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. Okay, the spirits in prison. Because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited and when? The days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved. This goes back to spirits being in prison. Right? Remember when the, in the Gadarenes, don't send us! Don't send us away! Meaning, don't send us to prison. Don't send us to the pit. They asked, will you send us? Will you permit us to go into the pigs? Do not send us to prison. We know about it. Some of our fallen brothers are there. <coughs> Some of our fallen brothers are there. We'll get a little more detail in a minute on that. All right. This place where they are chained and will never be released. 
forever because their sin was so great, so vile, and so wicked, God said, bam, so much so that demons now and all the time after were like, oh, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it to me, don't do it to me, scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> about going where they already were. Yes? Is there still a third roaming around them? A third of the angels? Well, I don't know the number, but uh, let's just say a darn tootin' lot of them. Okay? <laughs> Well, if a third of the angels fell, some have been imprisoned in a pit. How many? We don't know. Could that be a hundred? Could it be ten million? I, I don't know. I don't know. Good question, though. But we don't have an answer. We don't have an answer. Okay, so, yeah. If the population at the time of the flood could have been as many as five million, and half of them were men, and every single woman was possessed by a demon, that would be 250 million. And yet the angels outnumbered the stars, which is billions. So it's a very small percentage. Very small percentage, absolutely. In the prison. Right, right. And and that's that's as close as we can get. Estimate the population, say take half, okay, and the stars are, in, uh, you know, we don't know how many uh, stars in the heavens or how many angels. So let's just take, one <laughs> percent? I don't know. Something like that. We're, we're guessing. Okay. But the comparison here is it goes back to those in prison and the days of Noah. What do we do in Genesis 6? This is all occurring in the days of Noah. Okay? That's why that Nephilim coming back, as in the days of Noah, so it would be at the time of the end, the return of the Nephilim. Okay? I see. <laughs> okay. So let us continue. Second Peter. Open to Second Peter, which we will be going through in main service and probably the not too distant future. Let's find out first. I know, isn't that amazing? Wow, Elvira, you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now it's talking. It goes from false teachers and prophets, meaning those who are influenced by demons and lies and rebellion and their greed and false words. It's interesting here, what was Satan? He was a great talebearer. Those who would follow him would also be talebearers, those who spread lies and gossip and deceit. One thing they would be doing, are you sure you, are you sure God is letting you do everything? Have everything he's supposed to let you have or he could let you have? I can show you how you can be like him. Show you how to be like a God. Trust me. You've already seen some of the other ones. Look how powerful they are. Man stands no chance against them. Don't you want that? Don't you want your children to be great and powerful? Just spreading lies, right? Telling falsehood. So it goes right from these false teachers to, for if God did not spare angels, in verse 4, whoa, right back to it. God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains and gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. Down in hell, special place, in the pit. They will not be freed. They will be freed to be judged and sent to the lake of fire. That's it. They will never see the light of day except to stand before God one last time. Bam. God's let a lot of demons do a lot of business on earth. These ones were so wicked, he won't even let them see the light of day. Gloomy darkness in chains. This is a big deal. Okay? You catch this? This is a big deal. God allows a lot of evil. He does, and he uses it for his purposes. But this he said no. This he said no. And it goes on. If he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah. Oh my goodness! We're right back to Noah! These angels and Noah! You, can, you find a theme here? <laughs> okay. Um, preserve Noah, herald of righteousness. And then wait a minute. With, it says, 22.6, by turning in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. It goes from a flood upon the world, the ungodly, then it goes to Sodom and Gomorrah, condemned them, making an example. What was the problem with Sodom and Gomorrah? What was their great sin? Sexual perversion. Rebellion to God's plan. Sexual perversion. Think about this. They wanted to do what with the angels? 
have their way with them. Switch it. Those are good angels. What would be one of the great perversion of the fallen angels? The opposite of that. Have their way with human women. Now, we'll get to that in a minute. About, oh, could they? Okay? Now, again, we can't be absolutely dogmatic. We're just trying to take as much of the snippets of Scripture that we have. Okay? And if, if we have a different view, that's fine. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. This is not a salvific issue. Okay, it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, and it says, And especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority. When they fell from heaven, they despised authority. And God said, What? You cannot marry in heaven. You are not given in marriage. They fall. They said, We're going to do whatever we want. Right? What's it again? Again, the lust of defiling passion. This seems to be a theme. Sodom and Gomorrah. Defiling passions. Perversion and rebellion. You guys catch this a little bit? Okay. Oh, uh, before we go, there's one last line I should have highlighted. This one. Their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. These schemes of perversion are still active today. Do we see perversion from heterosexual patterns today? Beyond measure. Was that how it was in the days of Noah? It certainly appears to be. Okay? Right? Their condemnation for long ago is not idle. Condemnation of what? Lust of defiling passion. And a rebellion to God's authority. Just think about what we see today. All right. Jude! Open your Bible to Jude! It's near the back. Right before Revelation. <laughs> Who here has read the book of Jude? It's, it's, a, it's a huge undertaking. Could take you 20 minutes if you were going slowly. A minute, 30, 40 seconds if you're going quickly. But to study it in depth takes a while. <laughs> okay? To read through it is quick, but it is so powerful. So powerful. It's like, what have we been doing? First Peter, it's, it's technically a small letter. And we've been in it for eight, nine months or so, right? Jude 6, and the angels who did not keep their what? Proper domain. Their first estate. Their abode. Those in heaven do not defile themselves with lustly passions. Doesn't say they couldn't. But they have to fall first. Okay? What happens here? Angels who did not keep their first estate but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Wow! Again! Angels which what? Left heaven in rebellion, and it appears for their reviling lust and passions are kept in everlasting chains and, and darkness until the judgment of that great day. This reiterates Peter. Okay? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah right back to the type of sin. Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Random lustful sex. They hate God and the kingdom of God, and they hate authority. There's a theme. Yes. Yes. 
Wait, let's so start again. Angels in heaven would be with God. Yeah, they would. Well, okay. So they're looking at, they're ministering spirits. They're down there. They're seeing the beauty of women. All, for all we know, all angels in heaven are male. We just don't have any listed as women. We don't know for sure. None are always it's a male pronoun. They're down on earth looking at these beautiful women, right? The ones who were keeping their estate as pure were the ones who started to be lustful, see their beauty as seeing what human men were enjoying seems to be like hey wait a minute that looks pretty good why would God not let us do that why would God withhold, withhold that from us just like Eve Satan says why is God withholding how to be like him from you seems that the exact same sin of pride and covetousness and desire and lust filled those angels why why would you give up glory Why does someone who has a wonderful marriage give it up because he decides to have a bunch of other women? Right? Yeah. Right? So. Always a desire to something more. Always a de desire to something more. I, I, I might have said this one before, but I read a quote once from uh, uh, Hugh Hefner. And he said, I could have the most beautiful women in the world in the January issue. And I guarantee when the February issue comes out, those men want to see new ones. Right? Never enough to satisfy that lust. Never enough. So they left their proper place. They left their domain. They left their abode. If they left it, they left it so they weren't under the authority of it. The control of it. So they could do what they want. Why do people want to deny the existence of God now? So they can sin. Huxley said it honestly. I don't want God because he interferes with my sexual mores. I want to do what I want to do and I don't want a God telling me I can't. Right? Most honest atheists will say, I don't want God telling me what I can do. Well, you're referring to God. Well, I don't want him telling me, but stop referring to him. You don't think he exists. <laughs> because they say, I want to do, I want to be my own God. My decisions are all that matter. Right? Evolution truly has no altruism in it. They claim they do. Be good without God. They can't. To be a true evolutionist, it's all about you and your survival, your propagation, and how can you be the fittest? Everything else is an enemy. Right? That's a whole nother study on morality and everything else. <laughs> okay. But, can't have that. Let's look at this strange thing. Huh. Does anybody have a different word here besides strange flesh? Huh? <coughs> okay. Use that KJV. Anybody else? No. That's right. Strange is probably the best. Well, yeah. different. different. Well, that's a lot of people say different. That's what I was looking for. Other, Other flesh, <laughs> and 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 that's fine. But it doesn't get to the core of it. it doesn't get to the core of it. Although we can say homo, uh, homosexuality, bestiality, pedophilia all fall into that. But take that further in the context here talking about being in everlasting chains until that judgment even Sodom and Gomorrah them in like manner giving themselves over strange flesh I think for Sodom and Gomorrah not only was it bestiality and stuff like that but going after angels okay and it were, this could mean strange the opposite of what God put into place going for even those who are outside of natural man we don't know that, but this term, it's a powerful way to state this. Okay? All right. So, ex porneo or pornea, anybody heard this term? Sexual perversion. That's what we're getting. Strange uh, flesh. Non hetero. Non human, possibly. We, if we kept a human, would put these two. If we add the other, possibly that. Okay? 
I mean, we know this term from Leviticus, thou shalt not lie with a male as with a woman. It's an abomination. For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. But it even seems to go further than that. Because God is allowing that to happen. But God shut that, whatever the angels were doing, He shut it down. He shut it down hard and fast. To the point that many would say the reason, even though we saw it some after the flood, but the reason it's not rampant for quite a while is that fear. That absolute fear of the fallen ones for that punishment to fall upon them. Talk about scared straight, right? It's like God's scared straight program to angels. They fear it so much, they, even though they are lusting, they're holding it in check. Because at least they're free, to some degree. No. You're talking, oh, humans? Oh, humans, sure, I'm sorry, I thought we were still on the B'nai Elohim. Yeah, humans, sure. Right. They, they, they went to Shoal waiting for judgment. Yeah. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. A lot of people. A lot of people. So, let's continue here. Let's go to Matthew twenty-two thirty. 30. So, this is one of the main, the main, I, I will even say it is the only verse many people use to argue against B'nai Elohim being the sons of God and B'nai Elohim being some sort of human. Some sort of human. Whether it's a possessed man or possessed woman. The sons of godly line of Seth versus the ungodly line of Cain. The daughters. Still completely human. This verse. 2230. Anybody have that? Would like to read it? For in the resurrection Okay. So how would someone use that verse to say that angels, the angels, the sons of God in Genesis 6 can't be angelic? Any idea? Anyone? Anyone, well, how, this verse is commonly used to say, ah, uh, it can't be angels in Genesis 6. It must be some type of human. How would this verse be used to defend a non-angelic uh, um, contamination? Well, the suggestion here is that, that angels are generous, uh -huh. capable of... Right. That's it. They're saying, th this argument is, is actually accompanied with another argument that angels, which, another argument that isn't able to be held, is that angels are only spirit beings, meaning non-material. But if you remember last week, we went over several verses. Genesis 18, Genesis 19, in Acts, um, and, and um, the angel touched Peter. Ezekiel, the, uh, Isaiah, both had experiences with angels, right? Where it was a physical experience. This, the so physical angels on the good side have definitely appeared throughout the Word of God. The argument here is: see, they don't, they're not given in marriage, therefore they're sexless. Does it say that? It just says. When they're in their first estate, <laughs> their proper abode, God says, no, no, no. Okay? Those who keep their first estate as godly angels. Right? The ones who have fallen, everything they want to do is an aberration of God's plan. So if God says don't, they say do. Right? That's rebellion today. So, the argument here that I always ask, and it's just my, me asking, is when you get to heaven, are you going to marry? Well, obviously no. But... Are you going to have all your parts? <laughs> going to have all your parts. 
Or is God going to give you a new, a new, uh, a new body, but it's a corporeal body? Well, no, no. We're not just spiritual bodies. We're corporeal bodies, eternally corporeal and spiritual. Like Jesus could just be in a room and not be in a room. Okay, it's not only spiritual. Okay, you see, as I have flesh and blood, you too. So, with flesh, carne. Okay, with flesh. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh yeah. Well, so you're in the war, you lose your legs. Would you get them in your new glorified body? Of course. Is God is God going to leave out your sexual organs? Is my question. I'll put it bluntly. Well, what? Why? Does, that, that doesn't mean he's going to remove them. We just won't use them. Or we might. There won't be nothing to bring back that any lust or back into. Life. We won't have any sin. The desire for sin won't be a part of it. We won't have a desire for sin. We'll have the mind of Christ. We will have the mind of Christ. Because we have already been through the testing and the fire, and He will relinquish us from the mind of fallen man to the mind of Christ. One thing, one thing is, the whole point of the whole Bible is, from the beginning, man sinned, and the whole point of, from, from the Garden of Eden all the way back to, get back to the Garden of Eden. So, am I, am I right? Maybe I'm a little crazy, but I'm thinking that when we get to heaven and we have our heavenly bodies, we're back to... Sure. Before the sin, mm -hmm. before Adam knew his wife, so therefore... Right, and that was a great argument Terry made for last week. That the purity of the body and the mind before the fall led themselves not to desire to procreate. Right, that was the great argument Terry made. The comment. Well, I need to go to the bathroom. What? See, that's, I don't think we don't know that the angels ate. Well, well, we don't know that angels ate. They consumed food. They human food. Yeah. Carbon and you know all the stuff. Did it go nowhere? But well, Adam and Eve before they sinned. We don't know that. Perfect. After the sin, that's when everything happened. Right, but we don't know if they if they still had to. Okay. El eliminate somehow. How we don't know. Maybe you don't, but we don't have an answer to that. The point is, the angels ate, and something happened. Where? Well, Where? either it just went away, or they we we didn't get the stories of them going to the loo, <laughs> but we know that they could consume human food and do everything humans did. In that sense. So, did they, when they were in that state, did they waste the same way? I don't know. That's a question that's come up before. It's like, I, I don't know. But you know, you know, I've always thought this though. You know how sometimes you're in the bathroom thing and it's a waste of time to have to go to the bathroom so many times a day. And you're like, you're like, wow. But in heaven, even if I do, I have eternity. So what am I rushing for? <laughs> right? If I do have to, what do I care? I'm not in a rush. I, I don't have deadlines the same way. Uh, uh, right? I don't know. But the point is, do you think God's going to leave certain parts off? I don't. He's going to make us whole and perfect. Yeah, he's, we're going to have our bodies. Okay? So, my point is this. This argument, if we have our bodies in heaven and we're not going to be doing it, it doesn't say angels don't have all the parts. Because when they've showed up in human form, they seem to have everything. You could tell that they were males. And they interacted, touched, ate, did everything. Who knows? We don't know but it's not in my opinion a valid argument at all that angels are sexless in fact because they have such lust we're told of their lust it appears that they can be sexually enticed and if they were sexless it kind of seems would that even be an issue but then you get a body to do it Right. That's why when people say they're only they're only spirits, you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. At times there's spirit, but at times 
They're corporeal. We have many examples. So that's not a valid argument. That was an argument they I've read, and I went to bad argument. You know, it is. It's a bad argument. We have too many examples of them being able to do this and this and touch people and whatever. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what if you were what if you were blown to a thousand pieces? Are you were in the ocean eaten by a thousand sharks? Could God reform you? What if you died a thousand years ago and you turned completely into carbon again? Dirt to dirt. Could God restore you? What happens when you get burnt? You turn to carbon faster. Okay, don't worry about that. <laughs> Anybody have an issue with cremation? Yeah, yeah. He knew you before the foundation of the earth. He's not going to forget you. Absolutely. Not one. Because you're not going to fall. He's going to make your DNA perfect again, and that includes all of you. That information will rebuild you perfectly. He has your DNA. There you go. Perfect. Anna, perfect. Woo right? Okay. So, <laughs> so Numbers 13 is brought up because we have Numbers 13, the children of Anak, the children of Anak, right? And it says they dwelt there. So everyone knew it. They were very great. Okay, the city was great. They were huge. They were powerful and mighty and everyone knew the name. Uh-oh, children of Anak. The way they state it is if it's like, whoa, you know. Um, Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell on the land, and the cities are walled and very great. These people built cities. They were strong. They were powerful. And it goes on to say, and there were, we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So small. They knew them as a race of giants. They saw them, stating these are a race of giants. They are part of this Anak, which people take back to a, a breed of Nephilim. How? We don't know. We know that they some took the risk, it appears, and did it after the flood. And what happened, we're not told, to make it kind of go on hiatus. But I'm going to tell you, I believe... That return is coming, as in the days of Noah. It's all we see it now. Just look at all the uh, Marvel stuff and the DC stuff, and look at the idea of transcendence and transhumanism and uh, Kurtzweil and all these saying we're going to be able to chip you. Well, we can already affect your DNA. I told you about the CRISPR box. Well, change your child's DNA while they're in the womb, right? It's at our. You can order that online. It's at our footsteps. They're already talking about the triple helix. I've told you about some of the strange clonings. The strangest to me is the spider goat. It's a goat infused with a spider so that they make huge strands of silk instead of little ones. Yeah, then you can see them. They're alive. They have a bunch of them. That's just weird. They look like goats. Yeah. They don't. They don't look like a mix. Yeah, they, 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 they look like goats, but they they spin silk. I don't know how it comes out. I'm not sure, but yes. Look up spider goat. It will. It, you'll go. What? <laughs> I should have had a picture because it's weird. Right. So the idea of DNA manipulation is happening at a massive scale. That's the fifth one, which I didn't put up there. This is the 20th century one. The 20th century one, which is possibly supported by the, the book of Yasher and Enoch, that they knew how to manipulate biologically, and so they were taking these women and creating a hybrid race biologically, like in a laboratory. Although it appears, biblically, that it was pure lust, meaning physical lust. But... Their DNA manipulation is what we're seeing today. But man is being so rebellious to God. I bet if demons showed up right now, look at the, 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 the shows like Lucifer and these other ones. They're the good guy. That guy, he's sleeping with everybody. The demons are sleeping all over the place. People are thinking, hey, that's a good thing. They're falling. They're in rebellion to God. They're all giving way to their lust. 
It, it's not hard to imagine. Just look at the world we're living in. God is being put further, further away. Authority is being put, put further, further away. Self-desire, self-gratification, lust is being taken to the forefront. The demons are like, wow, it's ripe for the taking. That's where we're headed. The return of the Nephilim. <laughs> we're headed, as in the days of Noah. Who knows how that will play out. But we're told in Matthew 24... Jesus says in Matthew 24, bada bing, I'm telling you now. Yes. Do you know the country that is doing most of the service? I'll give you one example. I'll, 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 all the big ones. Uh, but I'll give you an example. When I, I read an article about eight years ago, seven years ago, and when the, I know it was illegal to clone human DNA in Great Britain. Absolutely illegal. Right. So it came out in the newspaper, human DNA cloned by British lab, blah, 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 funded by the, U the UK government. It didn't say it's illegal. It didn't say it was illegal for the government to fund them. All it said is, oh, look what we've done. The fact that it was illegal before and it was illegal then, nobody cared. And who was funding it for 10, 20 years while it was illegal? The government. Who said, oh, it's illegal in here. Hmm? Went there, yeah. Huh? No, that was, well, I only have the example from the UK. But if you think we're not doing it, you're crazy. We're probably, with the amount of money we put on super, so, in, in 300 billion for for a military our super soldier program which doesn't exist <laughs> i mean just think about it think about it it's huge in the medical because if you talk about people with cancer research and all that stuff now they're believing a huge amount of treatment is according to genetics it's all genetic stuff that they're doing coming up with all kinds of Treating. Oh no, that's, that's what all of this is for. Right? Because we want to we want to share all of these things. We'll make it better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I would say. Um, further reading, Deuteronomy 2 talks about the height of the Anakins, the Anak. So just to finish this off, there's more support in the Bible about how they are were great in statue, those of Anak. Um, I think we're, we're heading towards the days of Noah. I don't think anybody who's into Bible prophecy would doubt that at any level. Um, that's why this is actually a fascinating thing to study. We're seeing it right before our eyes. And we're, with genetic uh, manipulation alone, right? But uh, according to some intertestamental period books, there was already that happening before. Of course, that is extra biblical, but they are fascinating to read if you've never read Yasser or Jasher or Enoch. Interesting bits. Don't take them as scripture. They're not. But interesting, weird supports for this kind of thing. Could have just been somebody's active imagination. Don't know. Um, but they weren't written by Enoch or Jasher. But um, any questions? What? Don't be, oh, okay, okay, so let's finish with that. <laughs> Should this scare us? No. 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 We've, read, we've read the end. Right. No. right. He is, in us is greater than he is in the world. We got nothing to worry about. No. We keep ourselves pure. We keep ourselves in the word. We keep ourselves true. And we say, I am God's child. He's the only one who can make me greater, better, and exalt me into a glorified body. Not some demon and or alien and or ascended master or Christ consciousness. That won't lift me up. I have to humble myself before the Lord and He will exalt me. Those who exalt themselves are abased. Pride goes before the fall. Was Goliath one of these guys? Well, most likely, yes. Uh-huh. And his brothers as well. He had quite a few brothers. Yep. They were, we have them being killed off by some of David's mighty men. They went and fought the other giants, his brothers, and killed them. So, right. Any, any other questions? 
You got a, a, a grasp on this? Now, I'm not saying that this theory is right. I'm saying it's one that has the most support. If you want to say angels could somehow breed with women. If you want it to be completely of men, then you just have to pick one of the theories that it was just some group of men and women who were able to do it. Okay? Well, you know, this isn't salvific. It's not. It's fascinating. But I think in the days of Noah, when this kind of stuff is starting to happen again, is more of an example of what it must have been like before than just saying evil people were breeding with some non-evil people or evil people were breeding with evil people and they were rulers who were evil. And fine, possession happens all the time, but I don't see giants coming out of it. I heard Crowley was trying to call Crow Oh my. You silly goose. You silly goose. Check this out. So here, we were going to get to this next week, but we'll quickly, since you got the Elvira look, and... <laughs> <laughs> so really quickly and we'll get into this next week when we do aliens and UFOs uh, Crowley who was called himself the B666 and did huge conjurings brought up two Iwas and Lamb and both of them this is a, a depiction of Iwas here and he brought him up in his house in Scotland on the um, uh, Loch Ness, right above Loch Ness, which is now owned by the guitarist for Led Zeppelin, because he's such a hardcore occultist. He wanted it for conjuring demons. Um, but you didn't know that. <laughs> a drawing of a demon by Aleister Crowley. Yeah, just, we'll get in more into that later, but it's a great segue. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week. Okay, so let's pray. Father God, <laughs> thank you so much that uh, your word is so amazing and, and so fruitful in our lives, Father. But the security of who we are in you, Father, is the most amazing thing. It says, don't be overjoyed that you have power over demons. Be overjoyed that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what you said to us. And that is where our heart is, that we are your children written in your book. Everything else, Father, if you give us a mission to do, Father, is just for your glory. And give us the heart and the mind and the clarity of thought and the guidance to do it just for you. So as we go through this day and this week, Father, it's all about you. We thank you and praise you in our Savior's name. Amen. Think about him coming to visit you. <laughs> the last time somebody asked you how many angels can dance on the earth. <laughs> <It'd have been. laughs> yeah. The response is always, why would they want to? Yeah, why? What are they going to do there? Is that where the party's at? They like the boogie? <laughs>